<laughs> Starting early? No. Good. What's up, guys? Welcome back to episode 54 of Check My Resume. I mean, uh, Psychotic and Iconic. <laughs> Thank you to everybody that's tuned in to the live stream tonight. Thank you to everybody that likes, follows, and subscribes to all of our platforms. Paul's here along with my co-hosts Nick Theories, Mikey P, and Philly Phil. Mikey P, take it away so we can get this Wait, going. Hold on just one second. Of course, apparently the fucking monitor is not set up and set to the third monitor. Give me like fucking ten seconds. Oh, we're good. We'll be alright. Check my resume. That's that's the episode name. Everyone's part two. Half. Part two. Half. Everyone's all right. at our topic sheet right now. Well, look, man, we can give you credit for that. Yeah. Look at that topic sheet. It's all right. That's all the right. fabulous. Mike, go ahead. Mikey P. <laughs> Mikey P, go ahead. <laughs> all right. Let's fucking go, guys. We got conference championships. You already know. All right. Hell of a weekend. Pauls, you'll get your kudos today. All right, buddy. Um, let's get right into it, though. All right. <clears throat> so tonight, guys, P&I is brought to you by Prize Picks, your home for daily fantasy sports. New users who sign up for Prize Picks today using the promo code ICONIC will receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy made easy. Check us out tonight on the Props Network at PropsHQ.com, where you can subscribe to our show and keep up with all of our live stream schedules and uh, anything re related to show news, our Twitter feed. It's all there. Go check us out. PropsHQ.com. All right. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Conference Championship <laughs> Sunday. We know the Super Bowl. All right. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Phil, you know what to do. That's not fun. <laughs> I do. So what? You know what I mean? Like, <gasps> I fuck with that energy, bro. I salute that. Bro. Oh my god. I Let's rock and roll, baby. <laughs> Let's rock and roll. Let's fucking rock and roll, baby. We're starting off with the uh, Bengals so we and got, the Chiefs. We I gotta start it. with the big one. We we'll start it. with the big one, Paul. Pause. All right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Real shit. <laughs> Y'all wild in this episode already. <laughs> AFC Championship. It was memorable. The Bengals surpassed the Kansas City Chiefs in overtime in Kansas City. Come from behind victory. Paul's called it here on this show on Thursday. All right. Guys, player of the game. Let's go. Let's get right into it. Paul's, go ahead. Player of the game is Joe Burrow. Joe Cool. The dude doesn't blink. His poise, man, is remarkable for being a second-year player coming off a major injury where he tore his knee apart. Um, I really, like, jumped on this guy's bandwagon, man. It's crazy. It's funny because me and Tom were talking about this last night. When they were, I think they were 7-7, seven and seven, and we were talking about um, our predictions, Mike and Nick, and we were saying, like, who's going to win the AFC North? And we were, I think we were, like, between the Ravens at that time. I was saying, like, I thought the Browns maybe had a chance. And Tom kept saying it was the Bengals. It was the Bengals. And that was exactly you, when Tom. that was exactly when they caught fire, and it's funny because that was like Joe Burrow's welcome moment, and he just says he took off, and the the Titans game was the start of it, of him blossoming, and he's my player of the game, no questions asked. That guy is remarkable. I love it. I love it. I mean, everybody. I feel like everybody's going to choose Joe Burrow, but like mine is going to be like the difference maker for me is going to be Lou Anarumo. Uh, the Cincinnati uh, <laughs> Bengals defensive coordinator. Let's bro, go. Bro, Let's to fucking go. like shut down the Chiefs the second half is fucking crazy. I mean, they were steamrolling the Bengals. Like straight up, like three possessions. They had three touchdowns. They went down in the field. It was looking like a blowout. 21 to three. This was, That was the score. And then uh, before half, you know, um, it was 21 to 10. And then the fucking, the Chiefs, you know, went for it um, with like five seconds left. They threw a, a, a lateral pass to Tyree Kill. He didn't get in the end zone. They had no timeouts. They missed an opportunity on points. And that was the, the moment right there that changed the whole game. And then the second half, the Bengals, after letting up 220 passing yards in the first half, 220. Like, if, if a quarterback has that a whole game, it's a decent game. Oh yeah. Like Baker don't even hit that all game. I know. And it's crazy. Uh -huh. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not crushing Baker now. That's no, all this good. Is, this Jimmy G had here. it. Jimmy this G is... hit it this weekend. Right. Paul. <laughs> <Pause. laughs> Whoa. Pause. Big, big pause, bro. But yo, like for real, like 
the second half to give up uh what 55 passing yards to like the craziest high octane offense we've seen in the last like five years is just insane um the, tyree kill didn't even have a catch the second half he had on two targets you want to talk about total shutdown that is total shutdown i mean the, the bengals defense in the second half they came to play that looked like a super bowl caliber defense and you know for me it was just they made the adjustments when it mattered most and for me that's why lou anarumo is my player of the game <laughs> He's not a player. He's a Lou fucking coach. Lou Anarumo. Nick, and one more time. What's his name? Lou Anarumo. That, I mean, that's the bottom line. That's that's my that's my guy. Like, yo, the way to shut down that offense, the way they were rolling on the road, you get my respect, man, and you deserve to go to the Super Bowl. Congrats to the Bengals. Lou fucking Anarumo. That's yeah. crazy. That's crazy. I was digging Good in the crates for, for that, that pick. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Well, okay. it's easy to say Joe Burrow, though, guys. Yeah. It's easy to say that. Um, Patrick Mahomes prior to this game was eight and zero against every every QB not named Tom Brady in the playoffs <laughs> until Joe Burrow entered the picture, and then Joe Burrow louder, beat the Kansas dog. City no, no, Chiefs. No, 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 no. Go back. We, we say that again. Say that stat one more time. One more eight time for the offense, baby. Except against Tom Brady, and now Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow, who beat <laughs> Mahomes and the Chiefs twice in January. Oh yeah, twice. That doesn't happen. That's crazy. That does not happen. This is history right here that we're seeing. Joe Burrow could become the first to what? It was win the Heisman, win the national championship, and win a Super Bowl in a three-year span. This is history we're seeing. So that's the easy pick, and Paul's had it. All right. <clears throat> so shout out Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow. No. <laughs> He's fucking He's cold. cold, man. Ice in his veins, bro. But Down 21 to 3, didn't even flinch. He chills. Fucking love it, man. But, guys, I'll give a shout out to a couple other players because um, I don't want to be a copycat here. Joe Mixon in this game, in in the moments that matter most, especially mm -hmm. at the end. He he showed us why he's a top five running back. He got the yardage that he needed consistently, just churning out first down after first down. And that man deserves some credit because I don't think he gets enough love in this league. I remember fighting with you guys about him earlier in the season, before before the season started. You guys thought I was fucking nuts for saying he's a good player. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> there's that. But also, Evan McPherson, we have to do this for the brand again. Oh, yeah. The kicker, four field goals, the game winner again. This guy is crazy. Money. They say this is why you draft a kicker. I guess it worked out for them. Uh, unbelievable. Unbelievable. So shout out to all those guys. Next up, though, most impressive aspect or moment of the game. Nick, go ahead. The most important aspect of the game. I, for me, the game changer besides the Bengals stopping them. I mean, yeah, stopping the Chiefs before half was the Samaje P. Ryan touchdown for 41 Ooh, yards. Choice. Uh, so because for me, it's like, okay, they're down 21 to three, right? So I believe when they played last, the Bengals were also down 11 in that game and they won that game. So for me, it was like, okay, once they got it to that, you know, 11 point range, instead of being down 21 to three, that's when they were like, okay, like we're still in this game. We're only down by two possessions. It was 21 to 10. It was a beautiful play by Samaj P Ryan for 41 yards. Uh, a pass from Joe Burrow um, that made it 21 to 10. And then they made a big stop on uh, before the half. That changed the whole game. When they went to halftime, I can guarantee you they went in there and they took all the momentum from the Chiefs. All of it. Because they were down 11. They were down 11 in a couple of weeks ago when they played them and they beat them. So in their mind, they're thinking, okay, we can, we can still do this. We did it before. Why can't we do it again? That gave them the confidence and that is my game changing play of the game uh to echo what you said that's the only reason i was actually gonna make my player of the game eli apple for that oh, stop yeah. i really was but i saved it <laughs> for this because that was the most impressive aspect and i said this uh last week when we talked about the niners and the packers who was the player of the game i said i don't know even know who it was i, I couldn't find it on the internet the guy that blocked mason crosby's field goal mm -hmm. you need to get points but when you're dominating a team like that get points and go into halftime feeling good Philadelphia Andy Rood showed up doing dumb shit again. Yeah. Now, if that was analytics, that's a pure, that is like 
a pure example of when you use analytics, it's good. Okay. When you rely on analytics, it's bad. I get it. Don't do that dumb shit. I get it. But in Reed's defense, I don't think that play was designed to go to Tyree Kill. I think Mahomes panicked because nothing was open. He realized the time and just threw it to Tyree Kill just to try to make something out of nothing, in my opinion. So, I mean, but that's, I don't, that's I, I fair. Think, I think but, Andy Reid was anticipating Patrick Mahomes to throw it in the end zone. I like, like, like I mean, a they quick were on, pass. That's fair, but it they were on the one-yard line, left. right? They were on, like, the two or something. Do like a that. QB sneak with Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> yeah, but they had no timeouts. That's the thing. That's why you throw it. So, if it's incomplete, you have maybe a second left. To I get think a there field was only goal. two seconds. Though, so, like, maybe. in Andy Reid's defense, I don't think he was anticipating Patrick Mahomes to throw it, like, in the field of play. I thought he meant it to, like, throw it in the end zone for me. Yeah. So I, I, that's that's the only thing I'll give him a pass for. Yeah, that. for me that was just that was the the changing moment, no and doubt. that it gave the Bengals momentum. They got the ball at halftime, and uh, that just that was it. Because at that point now you got Eli Apple who's got confidence in himself, and then you go into the locker room. You know the defensive coordinators fired up. You just made it because if they score there, the game's probably over. Tw what would the score have been? Twenty eight three. It would have been twenty eight to ten. Yeah. Twenty eight to ten. Yeah. So I mean, to me that that's when it all changed. And it's just the defensive adjustments from Lou are just, are just crazy are, are just amazing. Right. That so, he did that twice. So let me ask you a question. And so if like both of you, if the Chiefs <laughs> kicked the field goal there to be up uh, what twenty four to ten, would like do, does, is the outcome the same or is the outcome different? So I would say that's tough. Um, I would still say it's the same outcome. I really would because I just think that that play didn't really affect the. Uh, the Chiefs offense I mean maybe it True. did that who knows but they just shut them down like they actually shut them down Tariq yeah. Hill had no catches it's amazing they just they made them look they made them look like boring but they, they did that the first game they played him I know he looked human yeah and but in the first half he was lighting them up and it's the, it's to me it's the it's just the same thing dude like Joe Burrow that whole team is feeding off of that kid's energy yeah yeah what do you think Mikey P I mean it it seemed like, I mean, obviously three points makes a difference, but um, I, I don't know. Like, honestly, I, I feel like maybe it would have turned out the same. I, I kind of have to agree. But for me, though, most impressive aspect, obviously, is the fact that the Chiefs uh, were essentially outscored 21-3 to to end the game. All right. So that was, that was the first thing. But um, the turning point for me was definitely halftime. Because I thought for sure that the Chiefs were going to score there. I did not like that play call at the end. Um, they they had all the momentum going down the field, and then they, they called this side-to-side -side bullshit play uh, instead of just getting it in the end zone. And it kind of, it kind of, you know, not just then, too, but at the end of the game, which we'll talk about in a minute, um, it was just strange, the choice of play calling in those crucial moments. But for me, it was like, and I'm going to read you a stat real quick. Um, teams that have lost. Okay, so there's there's only one team that has lost after leading by 10 or more points at halftime in a conference championship home mm -hmm. game. I know and that one. was the Chiefs in this game. Teams were 20 and 0 prior to that. So, for Is me, that true? like, it's actually true. Teams were 20 and 0 when leading by more than 10 points at halftime at home in a conference championship okay. game. Okay. I was thinking of the so, Colts and Patriots in 2006. So, yeah. But the Colts were on the road. Interestingly enough, Colts were home. They were? Yes. I thought they were on the road. No, they were home. Patriots were in in, in uh Indy. Shit. Yep. Sorry, Mike. It's it's okay. Interestingly enough though, like I saw that stat during the game. And even myself, in my gut, when the Chiefs did not score right there, I had, a, I had a feeling in my gut that the Bengals were going to win this game, right at halftime. I didn't care to me anything else that was going to happen. Uh, the Chiefs running right through them in the first half it meant nothing to me. I just, it's just something about the Bengals this year where, like you, you just believe in them. You believe in them to be clutch in those moments, and I just had a weird feeling. And they did it, you know. See, they, they I, made history. I'm the opposite. Like, I feel like if the Chiefs score there, like, I feel it's like. It's over. Yeah. Like, I feel like even if they got a field goal, like, I feel like the Chiefs were, like, in control. 
Like, I think they would have the momentum going into half. They were home. They're up by 14. Um, and I think the crowd would have been rocking and rolling, you know. But they came out, and the Chiefs had the ball in the second half to start the second half. So, for me, it's just like I feel like they were in total control with a field goal at least. You got to get points. Like, that should be a lesson for a lot of teams. You take the points when when you have it. The Bengals do. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, like, why why give away points? Like, you need points to win the game. <laughs> like, for me, it's just like, why are you gambling? Because you get cocky. You think you have all these superstars who, who throw behind the back on, under the legs or touchdowns and shit. You think you're, you're fucking untouchable and you're invincible. And it's, it doesn't work like that. You're playing against a conference championship team, level team. Like, they're, they're good. The Bengals are a really good fucking team. You know what I mean? Like, just Thanks. because, like, their history says otherwise, that doesn't mean anything about this year. Like, they're for real. So, like, you got to take them serious. So, anytime you can get points, you got to put them on the board. So, for me, like, I think the Chiefs dropped the ball there, in my opinion. And that was that was the game for me. Because, you know, the Chiefs got the ball second half. They punted. But then the Bengals punted. And then the Chiefs punted again. And then it was a spiral. And then the Bengals finally got on the board to make it 21-13. Then you're thinking, okay, it's a one-score game. They're, they're feeling good about this. Because mm -hmm. they've been here before, a couple weeks ago. So, like, for me, it was just more of a confidence factor. And I, 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 I can't believe we saw the Chiefs crumble like that. That it was, was insane. It was, uh, it was very Andy Reid Eagles-esque. I've watched that happen a lot of times. Yeah, and well, you know what's weird, guys? I mean, this is the next subject that I think, I think we have to touch on this. The very end of the game, the Chiefs, you know, they have their command. They, they get all the way down the field. And it looked like they were going to score and win the game, right? So... Let's talk about that last drive because there's a Let's lot of questions there. <laughs> my bad. <Wait. laughs> you threw him off. <laughs> I threw you off. My bad. <laughs> no, I, I actually thought Nick was talking, so that's why I stopped. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, the last drive, though, the last drive, the Chiefs go all the way down the field. They have the Bengals on the ropes. And the play calling, it was weird. It was like the Chiefs chose – to instead of just scoring, which they could have done on first, second down, they could have done. Mm -hmm. Instead of just going for the touchdown, they decide they want to run off some clock and they call a couple of choppy plays. And then on third down, uh, third and fourth down for that. I mean, third down, Patrick Mahomes obviously was instructed to just take the sack, runs backwards, loses yardage, almost. I mean, they were. They made the field goal that much more difficult. He lost 13 yards. But it was yards. pretty clear. Fifth, it, it, was, it was pretty clear that they told him to take the sack and let the clock run. So to me, it was like, this is the Kansas City Chiefs at home. Their defense has been good pretty much the entire game. There's, you know, less than a minute in the game. Score the touchdown and then worry about the clock afterwards. They had three timeouts left. It was the weirdest thing to me. That they just seemed they cared more about running time off the clock. Well, I think the the in that sequence when it was first and five and the, at, at the five first and goal at the five at the end of the game with like a minute and thirty seconds, right? First down, they ran the ball, which makes sense. You want to kill the clock as much as you can because you're anticipating the score. Like you want them to have less time if you score a touchdown because obviously you would take the lead. So. On second down, I don't think they anticipated Patrick Mahomes getting sacked. That was it. Because now you're at, what, third and nine? And then the clock's running. And it's like, all right, do you, like, you want to risk you know, making a mistake? Because when you're in the red zone, it's harder to score. You have a lot, of, you have a lot more bodies and less, and less room to work with. So for me, like, that, was, that was really the game. The, 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 second, the second and goal play, when he got sacked, that changed the whole dynamic of the of the outcome right there. And also for me too, it's also a uh, like a, a compliment to Joe Burrow. Yeah, it's respect. They didn't want yeah respect. They didn't want to put the ball back in his hands no. already. No, because they know what was they knew it was coming. But I would have. No, so would I. Yeah, I, mean, I would, you I have to too. when you're, you're there at, score. You, you have to score. It doesn't make any sense not to. score. Yeah, you you're, still have to get in the end. You're yeah. at home, in the, the arguably the loudest stadium in the entire. In the entire NFL, okay, mm -hmm. and you're at home, you score a touchdown, the crowd's going to be roaring, let the defense have a chance, and if if they, for some reason, give up the points, the, the Chiefs still had three timeouts. And they had to uh, score which, a touchdown, the Bengals. They couldn't have won with a field goal. And they had to score a touchdown, correct. It was just, it was really, it was so bizarre, because this is the Kansas City Chiefs are talking about, 
They're an aggressive team, and and they seem to, in this moment, be conservative. And for me, I mean, you know, the field goal, even that, the, the momentum shifter besides halftime for me was the Bengals holding the Chiefs to a field goal there. It just felt like the momentum went right back to the Bengals going into overtime. And that's even with the Chiefs winning the toss. There was just that feeling to me. It was just like, you know what? Like, this is going the Bengals' way. Yeah. Well, he almost, the Bengals almost picked them off on the first play in overtime. Well, not for nothing, but yeah. here's my thing. Dante Robinson is getting two targets in the first two plays of, of overtime. Like, bro, like, he didn't do anything all game. Like, why are you going his way? Why don't you go to your horses? You got confused. Why don't you go to Kelsey? Why don't you go to Tyreek Hill? Like, if they're doubling Tyreek Hill, you still have Travis Kelsey or run the football. Like, for me, it's just like, it was just, like, you, you just you just can't explain that to me. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know why Dante Robinson's getting the first two targets in overtime. I don't. He's not your go-to guy. That's like, a fair if you want to go too. to the Super Bowl, you got to use your guys. That's defense. That's but that's coaching. Yeah, I, I, they were probably they were probably locked up. I mean, he locked them up the, the other two well, quarters. Well, that's the thing, Mike. So when Mahomes went to him on third down in the first possession of overtime, the only possession he threw a pick. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. Mahomes threw an interception with like in like 14 seconds into the into overtime, and that was a great play and by was that defender. Going, right, and was going to Tyree Kill. So they were obviously focused on Tyree Kill. They're saying. Tyree Kill ain't beating us. Yep. We saw that too much in the first half. We're adjusting. That's why, yeah. you know, they, you know, that's why they won the game. Halftime adjustments, defensive adjustments, that won them the football game. And you need that. You need good coaching like that to win. And, and, know, and and I'll, I'll tell you what. I, I, I agree, Nick, by the way. Those are phenomenal points. I'll tell you what, though. That ball, that ball's got to be caught by Tyree Kill. And that was the other thing. It was like, the play before, you get a sense like, okay, Mahomes escapes an interception, a costly interception, and then uh, you feel like payback's going to happen the very next play. Tyreek Hill has to catch that ball. I know it was a great play by the defender, but that ball went right through his hands first before it hit the defender's hand. He's got to catch that football. It just it just echoes off the point I'm trying to say. is It just seemed like the Bengals sucked the air out of, of everything in this game. They took the momentum. Um and I just had a feeling that they were going to pull it off the entire mm -hmm. time. It was, it's just one of those, they're one of those teams. They're like a team of destiny this year. It's yeah. And it's crazy considering there were at least three to four times this season where we had them as a topic, an exclusive topic. We talked about the Bengals being for real or not. And three times out of four, we said they're not for real. All three of us did. Yeah. Shame on us. <laughs> Three out of four times we said it. Same on us. They got we didn't take them seriously until the end of the season. Minus the backup quarterback, they have 2017 Eagles vibes. They're they just do. they're making comebacks. They're that. making big plays. They're they just they're making the plays when they need to happen every single time. Yeah, it's your, crazy. Your man. brother Rob just said that on the chat. Credit to both of you. That's it. Does it has that vibe? I've been, co I've been coaching them up. But you know what's funny about that, Mike? I, I, so. I know you said that uh, Tyree Kill should have caught that pass, but you got to think about it like this, right? If somebody shuts you out for like, and you haven't caught a ball in like an hour and a half, bro, you're cold, dude. Like, you're not even like there. Yeah. You're like out of the game. You're like, what the fuck is happening? Like, I'm not getting the ball. Or I'm not being myself. Tyree Rieger. Yeah, like the first it, half, he was all <laughs> over the place. The second half, he didn't, didn't, do, didn't do anything. So then like when he tried to get him going, he couldn't. Like he's and just Nick, that's fair rhythm. too. Honestly, it, it just I think that it's also coaching. that plays in, right into what I'm saying is like you just felt the air w like under the Chiefs was gone. Like it wasn't just Hill, but it was it was the whole team. It's just like I, I don't know. It was just a vibe. It was just you. I was like we were all sitting there watching it unfold. It just felt like the Bengals were gonna do the damn thing. They took control of the game, and, and they didn't look back either. They deserved every bit of this. It's a historic victory, um, and one for the franchise, of course, too. It's historic. Like This is going to be really tough to, to lose this type of momentum. They just have something special going on right now, and these guys just they, – they respond. They're resilient. Uh, they never quit. I'm so happy for them, really. This is this is looking like they're going to be a force for years, okay? So that's one side of it. Actually, this is a perfect chance to go into the next topic, okay? Guys, now we got to talk about 
where do the Chiefs go next? What do the Chiefs need to do in the offseason? Because it almost feels like they don't they don't really have a ton of needs. So what would you do if you're the Chiefs to get back to this point and, and continue to be a contender? So what do you got to do? For me, two things. You have to re-sign Honey Badger and Orlando Brown. You have to make sure they come back. And this is going to be a harsh reality. Patrick Mahomes needs to work on his mechanics throughout the entire offseason. He needs to go back to. The, he needs to work on his mechanics. I think he needs to say a little bit louder for the microphone for all the for the <laughs> audience to hear. I'm serious. He needs to work on his mechanics. I know he can do the sidearm throws, the left-handed throws, the underneath the defender throws. I get it, but he got outplayed yesterday by Joe Burrow standing in the pocket. Joe Burrow utilizes his athleticism. He doesn't rely on it. And that's the difference. He escapes when he needs to. When Patrick Mahomes gets out of the pocket, that's where he's the most dangerous. Which, you know what I'm saying? But I've, we've been saying this all year, dude, and for two years. When he's completing those passes and they're scoring 50 points, these fucking guys are wide open. Bro. I'm not watching Patrick Mahomes throw guys open. I don't give a fuck. When he's throwing it 70 yards no, in the air, Tyreek Hill is running. He's just running to the ball. I'm with you. I'm with you, bro. Where is Patrick that, Mahomes oh, yesterday? Go watch the game. Where does he stand in the pocket and th and thread a needle to double coverage to his guys? When he did it to t Travis Kelsey against the Bills, he was wide open. He just found the seam. Yes. Patrick Mahomes is that, not that dominating feels, teams from the pocket. Yes. He's not. I don't give a fuck. You guys that, can all call me that crazy. That feels, it feels much more like, like I, I understand, okay? And I'm not going to say you're wrong. It just feels like. That was more of a first half of the season thing. If you had a bone to pick about the guy, it was more relevant then. I think that this particular game, um, I, I really don't I, – I didn't see it as much of an issue. I just think that this team just went cold at the wrong time. And they've had they've had so many moments of they, – they dominate and they have a moment of mediocrity and they, they, they just took the foot off the gas, it, it felt like. It really did seem that way. It seemed like a conservative game plan. It wasn't Chiefs football. He is um, the leader. I don't of... think he had any. I don't think he had any problem completing passes though in this game. I mean, well, in the second half he did like, when the, the defense. The turnaround. Talked. The turnaround for this entire team. The reason why they got here. The reason why they had been been dominating for the last month or so, uh, month plus stretch, was because this team was willing to accept that they're not going to hit the home run on every single play. They're going to take what the defense gives you, and they're going to dissect you. That was part of the reason why they made this run. So I, I can't fully agree with you because um, some of that still shows up from time to time. And there, there were points of this game. It, it showed up a little bit, but I think it's a little bit of a stretch to say this guy's got to work on his mechanics. I mean, he just he literally just had, what, like 15 touchdowns in, in three games, and the offense was firing. They just it's all timely the things that happen with this team when they go south it's all timely it's timely yeah i agree but my thing is is like i said i just to me i'm not saying i know he's great I'm, I'm not saying that at all yeah. he is he's phenomenal mm -hmm. probably the best quarterback in the league if, if brady retires but wait hold on actually you just said that is this correct phil confirm this for me godfarb is saying Mahomes is the best player in the NFL. Change my mind? Is that Godfarb? All right. Well, before I give my answer, everybody <laughs> who's watching. Have to say that. Hold on. Everybody who's watching right now, please share the stream. Let's get your friends, your family, anybody else that you know get, in, get into this live. We appreciate it. Thank you. And Godfarb, you're crazy. Brady and Manning <laughs> equals is Mahomes and Burrow me, is absolutely insanity. That's number one. And number two, Mahomes is not the best player in the NFL. I am going to change your mind. The number 44-year-old quarterback in Tampa Bay, he didn't retire yet. <laughs> I just said is that. still the best player in the NFL. You have to work on your So change here. my mind. Well, they're both on the couch, so maybe change it's my mind. Through. Change my mind. I don't care. He could be on the couch all he wants, but he's got seven bowls, and he's chilling, bro. Like, Well, I said that. If he retires, then you can make the argument, but not for nothing. Like I said, and just to go back on it, because like I don't want that to get going to some crazy shit. No, nah, I don't care. You just, with Mahomes, dude, it's just... <laughs> He doesn't I, I I don't know. Bro. I don't know, bro. It's crazy, but it's hard to say because I know he's done some crazy shit. I, I, I get it, but you need to make the plays you're supposed to make. Agree. So a guy who's the best player in the NFL went to four championship games in a row and only came out with one Super Bowl. Uh you tell me. The guy had Tyree Kill, Travis Kelsey, Andy Reid, 
I mean, we can make a case Andy Reid's a choke artist too. He had eight total conference championship games in his career and only won one Super Bowl. I know, Nick. I mean, <laughs> we could talk about it. We can talk about. I know. I mean, for me, like, could you it, could? It's a little. It's a, it's a little too soon with this particular franchise, though. The run that they're having right now, um, and and where they're headed, it doesn't seem like that's a point you can argue just yet. Because it looks like they're going to be there a long time. Now, if they get back to the maybe. championship game again next year, and the same result happens, I mean, all right, five times, six times, that would be insane. Okay, but this team. Like this is the, this is the cl the class of the NFL. Uh, so I would actually it's really hard to hold on. I would disagree on that because as soon as Cincinnati gets some offensive linemen, good luck. Good luck because they're doing this well, with well, a shit well, offensive well, lineman for real. <laughs> we'll be talking about them yeah. for a long time. A too. long time. Oh, here, let's let's get back on track though. Let's get back on track with the question of the Chiefs improving. What do they have to do to improve, guys? And I'll tell you, I'll tell you um, a few things, and I'll let you take the floor, okay? <laughs> They have 15.4 mil in cash space. Mike, you had referenced Tyron Matthew and Orlando Brown being free agents. Crucial, okay? They also have Byron Pringle, Demarcus Robinson, Josh Gordon, Chavarius Ward on on the uh, in the secondary. You got Mike Hughes in secondary. Melvin Ingram's a key pass rusher for them. Uh, brought on earlier in the season. He's a free agent. You got Jaron Reed. So you have some like you have some guys that start for this team. Um, they can free up another $22 million if they cut Frank Clark and Anthony Hitchens. So what do you guys think that this team needs? Uh, and you could say they don't need anything. What do you think that they need? I mean, I know, Mike, you just said Mahomes needs to grow more. Um, what else, though? What else do we got here? For me, it's uh, – I don't think Kansas City has a running back. Like, I think they have the gadget guys – but, like, when you get into January and February, like, you got to be able to run the football. Like, if they had a, a big back that was getting you tough yardage, four yards of carry, but you're bruising the defense, you, you're, you're putting stress on that defense. Like Garrett Blunt. Like, right. And they already had McKinnon who, can, who could do all that, you know, pass catching. Uh, he has a pass catching uh, ability. And he has some running ability as well. But for me, like, I don't think Clyde Edwards-Alaire is it. Like, I think he's a decent back i just don't think he's a starter for me like so if kansas city can get a bruiser in the backfield then you're like oh fuck we got to respect the run and we got and we got to we got to defend travis kelsey we got to defend tyree kill because like not for nothing if you have a good running game how are you going to double you know the superior guys on the outside like for me like i, I just don't i think they need to get a, a a big time running back well like not a big time running back but a bruiser for me, like Nick, I, I think I you need that. Actually. I think you need the tough yards. Like I don't think they had that in their offense. They don't. Nick, I, I actually, I actually don't mind that one bit that you said that. I think that they need. You know what it is? I, they need. They have like a one A guy in Ceh. Okay, they have their do it all kind of all purpose guy who could be there on third downs in McKinnon, but they don't have the one B guy. They don't mm -hmm. have the AJ Dillon. Yeah. They don't have the guy that's going to get you those tough yards. That is a great point. Um, actually, there was part of this game where I felt like they went away from the run a little too often. I they mean, they, they had 139 yards on the ground, 5.8 per carry, 6 for Edwards Alaire, 5.4 for McKinnon. They kind of went away from it a little bit. Um, and they had been running the ball well during this run, and they have a great offensive line. So maybe it's just it's a confidence thing, too. Maybe they – they do need a bruiser. Maybe that's what what they need. I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes this team just gets pass happy. Yeah, like um, like like Mikey Pig. It's weird like, though. Think about it. You have a second and two. You have a bruiser at running back. You have multiple options to do shit. Like you can either hand it off, get the first down, or do a play action, go fucking deep. But they're gonna respect the run because you have somebody who's capable of getting eight yards. They don't have for carry. They don't have that kind of guy. Like nobody's looking at uh, C E H and be like, oh shit, like we gotta defend the run. You're, you're 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 banking on them being pass happy to beat them. You're hoping they give him the ball. Right. Correct. That's it. And you know what, guys? That's actually a need that they can probably address in the draft. I mean, they have a full slate of draft picks this year. Um, you can get running backs pretty late, and I mean, good ones too. So, if you need a guy like that, I'm sure that they'll be able to get one in the draft. I was actually going to say this, though. I think their biggest need, obviously, besides what Mike said. Bring it back, Matthew and Orlando Brown, which is crucial, by the way. Yeah. Absolutely <clears throat> crucial. 
there uh you got matthew is basically the quarterback of the defense um enough said there you don't really have to say much but you gave up a ton of draft capital to bring in orlando brown um it would be really odd if they didn't re-sign him he's coming um, and he, he had an up and down year but um eventually settled in there i was going to say this so i think uh, another thing that turned it around for this defense was when they brought in Melvin Ingram. I think that they need another pass rusher, especially if you are considering moving on from Frank Clark. I, I think you need a legitimate edge rusher, and I think you need a corner. I, I think that you need another guy who, who's a starting caliber corner. I think that they have a nice group there, but they don't have that like number one, I don't want to say shutdown type because they don't grow on trees, but you need a legit like number one starting corner on this team i agree that's where they began to get gashed um even by the Bengals uh, twice this year is the lack of a number one corner and they have some good pieces it's just you know if you had to pick one that you're going to draft first round or something i think that's that's where you got to go <clears throat> edge or corner yeah i agree with that 100 percent. i mean look if i'm the chiefs i'm looking at deontay foreman I was just thinking of him. Yeah, that would be a great I perfect I swear to God, I was That'd just thinking of that in my head. Perfect That's a great fit, move. Bro. They, they, great call, Nick. How, how do you guard it? Like, if he if he could play the way he's been playing with Tennessee this year, and you put that on the Chiefs offense, they would be tough to beat. Like, he's they're, not, they're, not, they're, not shut, they're not shutting down this, you know, the, you know, a whole half not scoring. Like, there's just no way. Because you, you can't defend all that. You can't defend Travis Kelsey. You can't defend Tyreek Hill. You can't defend a running back who's getting six yards of carry. You can't. Like you, you, you're gonna get, you're gonna have the defense on their heels all day long, and yep. that's what they're missing. And you know what else too? I I would say that they should prioritize re-signing Byron Pringle. I think he really came on late. Uh, he became a target hog. He's good. A red zone kind of receiver. I think that they found their wide receiver too there, and I think that he'd be cheap to bring in. It similarly to Foreman, as Nick just said. I think these are two guys you could get in there for cheap that could pay major dividends. Yeah. And then you don't got to worry about addressing that need, um, you know, leaving it up to the draft or paying up for a free agent because you, you want to be able to sign your guys back. These guys are, are top end talents that, that have to be paid handsomely. So um, these are all great points guys. And so that being said, I got one more question for you regarding this game before we have to move on. Okay. Oh, it's not regarding this game, but regarding the Chiefs. And then we're obviously going to talk a ton of Bengals next week. So stay tuned. All right. I got a facts or cap question for you. The Kansas City Chiefs will be playing in the AFC Championship game again next year. This will be their fifth consecutive year getting there. Facts or cap, the Chiefs are getting back to the AFC Championship game. That's cap. That's cap. Oh. That's cap. Not having it. We all had him there this year, it's the too. Bill's the Bills' time, way. and Joe Burrow's on the scene. Yeah, I mean, like, you got to see what happens for free agency because, like, you know, I can mention teams like the Steelers. Like, if they are if they can get a like, legitimate quarterback, bro, they're going to be scary. Like, like Just I, competent quarterback. All year, player. I've been saying, they have the weapons to, you know, really do some damage and, you know, take teams out in the playoffs. Like, you got Deontay Johnson. You got Najee Harris. You got uh, Fryer Muth, who had an awesome year. You got Claypool. Like, they have, like, offensive pieces. So, like, if they can get a quarterback, then yeah. But for me, I, I, right now, like, Kansas City is, pro is probably going to be the favorite to come out of the AFC next year. So, like, for me, I, I'll say facts for now. But... It, there's so many like moving pieces that are going to happen in the next couple of months. So, but right now it's facts. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I have to, I have to say facts because, I mean, we just looked at their list right there. I think they'll have no problem bringing back their their two top guys we just mentioned, um, and otherwise their core is is locked up. Um, they spent a lot to to keep these guys around, and then also you still got Andy Reid. Um, the defense, I actually think, will improve because they're going to be able to do a little bit in the draft. And then uh, the other thing is coordinators. Eric Bieniemy still isn't getting head coaching love, which is crazy. So he looks like he's going to be back. Um, well, after that second half Steve performance. Spagnolo. You know, it, What's it's, the deal with that? What is the deal with really that? It's really bizarre. I read that he's a, a good interview, interview or something. Apparently, he but they he's have not everybody. Oh, well, that that's important. But my thing is like, if Josh Daniels can get another shot, 
Don't even get me Why started. Why can't this guy <laughs> get an opportunity? I don't I hope, understand. Derek Carr needs to go to the Steelers before Josh McDaniels fucks his, his career up. Like, well, I, I think Hunter Renfro is going to eat in that offense, but. He stinks, dude. Bro, yeah. Don't no, get McDaniels, too not Renfro. That, uh, we'll, McDaniels. We'll talk McDaniels. about that, I was going to say, bro. <laughs> Put a timeout on that. We'll pause that, okay? Because we're going to talk about them, I'm sure, either Thursday or Monday. Um, but, yeah, guys, I mean, the Chiefs are returning pretty much everybody. And there's two teams that make that game. So I have to say facts. But it is – it's starting to get crowded in the AFC. Mm -hmm. It's starting to get crowded. It is. So – I, I think like without it further ado, though. Yeah, Suction think... need more things in here. I like it crowded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is great. It's been a fun year, man. It's been a fun year. One more time before we move on. Kudos to our guy, Pauls, over here. Yeah, for for having the Coyunes to take the Bengals over his preseason. Yeah, okay, you can hit him with applause. Chiefs pick. Go ahead. Talk your All shit. Right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Pauls called it. Pat yourself Pauls on the back. Here, the Bengals. There you go. And... It's looking damn good today, buddy. Bro, that's good a good-ass call. And, what? That's and a great call. And before we move on, oh. oh, it was. It was. Before we move on, guys, that sealed the deal for Pauls, by the way. When he won that game on the spread, he officially won on the spread for the season. There is no way that Nick or I can make the comeback. Um, the best we could do is get one game within – Paul sealed the deal, so he is our money line and spread champion. I'm not surprised. No season. Man, he had a great year. Great year. We Check all his did. fucking resume. He, he yeah, for I real. Mean, we all did. He was on fire from the start. He had a little lull period there towards the end, and then got hot again when it mattered. He all of us were hot at the end. All <laughs> of us did really well. Pauls took the cake. Um, DFS is not decided yet. It could possibly end in a tie. We shall see. We have one more contest coming up on Sunday, so stay tuned there. I have a one-game lead, I believe, right now. So, Nick, you have a chance to share the crown with me. Ooh, in the Super Bowl. Um, before we get I'll into <laughs> basketball and all the other sports, but this is just for football. So, Pauls is our picks champion. Congrats. Congrats, all right, Pauls. Give us Congrats. Thank, you, again. thank you. Congrats. Round Enjoy it. Enjoy it this year because I'm on your ass like back pockets <laughs> next year, bro. I'm on your <laughs> fucking ass, bro. Uh, Pauls. I'll, get, <laughs> I'll have to focus again. <laughs> NFC Championship and, uh, game. NFC Championship, all right? Rams, 49ers. It is the third time that they face off this year. The 49ers had their number. They won both of the first matchups, including the one to get into the playoffs, and they've won six straight against the Rams. The Rams, though, game-winning field goal. They put their demons behind them. They win 2017 to move on to the Super Bowl. Shit. Guys, player of the game. Who you got? It's got to be Cooper Cup. <laughs> yeah, no 11 cap. catches, a buck 40, two tutties. There's nothing else to say outside of he's in the Devontae Adams class. You could argue that he is the best wide receiver in the NFL. That is a fair argument to be made. Facts. I agree. And you can make the case he's the MVP of the league. Also fact. That's a fact. Facts. <laughs> I mean, this guy is. I don't know how the fuck he's always wide open. I don't understand it. Like, he is. Details. Just, yeah, like. He just knows the game, man. Like, he's very smart. He knows what coverages the defense are giving him. He knows how to get open in each coverage that he's presented. He's amazing. Like, this this guy is legit. And, yeah, like, he's got a bright future in the NFL. No for cap. sure. As long as staff yeah, is there, no doubt about it. Oh, yeah. Facts 100% to, to what both of you said. All right? The stats for the night. This guy had 11 catches on 14 targets. 142 yards and two touchdowns okay he accounted for all the rams touchdowns on top of that this is where it gets crazy right this is history let me read this to you cooper cup 20 games played this season 170 catches 2333 receiving yards 20 God, touchdowns damn. let me read that again hold on let me read that again 170 catches for 2,333 receiving yards and 20 touchdowns. He has almost more receiving yards than some quarterbacks have passing yards. Bro, that's insane. He literally is like... having the best season by a wide receiver ever. That's better than 
Jerry Rice. Jerry Rice was in this league. That is a better season than Jerry Rice. I don't even know what this to make of. This is unbelievable. I, it's history. It almost leaves me like speechless. I don't know what the like fact. 170 catches and over 2,000 yards and 20 touchdowns. I mean, like that's that's that was ridiculous. prime Pittsburgh AB numbers. That's like every week he's guaranteed to score a touchdown. So put the Rams up seven nothing. That's seriously ex exactly how you're going <laughs> in each game. It's dead. I'm facts. dead. Yeah, no, it's funny when you put it like that. <laughs> it's crazy. Facts. Like, you're focused. Very focused. Nick Herr. Nick, hey, yeah, real shit. <laughs> that's that's actually unbelievable. It is unbelievable. But guys, I mean that that was the easy call. The other one though, we gotta give some love to OBJ. All right, OBJ. Nine for 113, a bunch of crucial catches in this game, and he's been pivotal. It feels like that this this team really found something there, and OBJ redeemed himself. Um, he shut everybody up, right? Oh, 100%, man. I mean, and here's the thing, too. This is facts. The Rams don't get here without signing him, especially once uh, um, Robert Woods went down. What OBJ Max. has been able to do, the way he revived his career over the last two months has just been remarkable. Good for him. I loved how he went up to Debo Samuel and you gave him some words of encouragement. I'm assuming that's what he said when, you know, when Debo had the towel over his head. Um, I, I am really happy for him because we gave him a lot of shit on the show. He got a lot of shit on the media. And my biggest thing well, was, you was did, like, Mike. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. And my thing is, is like when your team's struggling and it's, they're down like that, I want to see him be a good teammate there, not just when you're winning. But the situation that when he when he was with the Giants and then you go to Cleveland and it's like back to back years, you're just wasting all of his talent. Like, I kind of get it. And I make this joke all the time. Show me a good loser and I'll show you a loser. So good point. I I'm uh, I'm really happy for him. I, I really am. He has totally revived his career. Dead serious. Oh, yeah, no doubt about we'll, it. Like, you could tell he's having fun. He's loving the game. Like He's, he's smiling. Yeah, like, he's balling out. Yeah, he's like, feeling like him again. Yeah, he is. Um, and, like, for me, it's just like, yo, like, bro, he's 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 been the difference maker for the Rams. 100%. Like, I, I feel like if he doesn't get traded there, I don't think the Rams are in the Super Bowl. No, I don't. Because I feel like teams would actually be able to double Cooper Cup easier. Yep. Because when Robert Woods went down, I mean – you're gonna like you're gonna take Van Jefferson to beat you. You know of what course, I mean? Yeah, for sure. But like Odell, you still gotta respect his ability to get open. Cause like not for nothing, like he was getting open in Cleveland. He just wasn't he getting just the ball. He wasn't getting the oh, ball, yeah. correct. And 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 so for me, like when you have like when you put him in a, in a dynamic offense and Sean McVay's and and you have Matthew Stafford throwing the ball, you have Cooper Cup who's getting a lot of respect and you know and demands a lot of attention, he's gonna have his opportunities and he's taking advantage of them. So good for him. Yeah, we'll see if they can bring him back. They they obviously have a tough cap situation because uh, they've been going all out for the last few years. They literally spend every penny that they have. So it's going to be tough to bring him back. We'll see if they can, okay? Guys, most impressive aspect of this game. It could be a turning point or whatever. What impressed you the most in this game? Give me your thoughts. For me, it was the Rams won when Sean McVay was trying to lose the game. <laughs> yeah, facts. Bro, I don't they won like actually in spite of him. <laughs> For real. The the blunders on the challenges. Yeah. No, you're down ten points and you, you blow a challenge on that fourth down call. Shout out to Matt Stafford. He made plays in the moment. He got them there. The moment of the game for me was when um Tart dropped that ball. Yeah. When he dropped that ball oh, and then yeah. on the very next play, they had the helmet to helmet hit on Odell Beckham. And it gave him 15 yards. It was a 45-yard play. That right there, I knew I'm like, the Rams are winning this game. Yeah. And I feel really bad for that dude. He, But he took it so professional. He took all the blame. He said, that's on me. Yeah. I love that. That's going to fuel him to come back a better player next year. Yeah. And, he, and he's he, a good and, player. And, and yeah. And he's been a good player for them for the last for the last five years, too. So, uh, yeah, I mean. He'll be better. Yeah, I, I, I feel the same way as you. Uh, that game flipped, you know, when those That's plays happened. That's a shame. That's yeah. a shame, man. It is. It is. But I don't know what McVay was doing, though, in those challenges. Like, not for nothing, but, like, a blind man could see that Stafford was not. He over wasn't the, close. Over fucking over the line. Like, he, was, he wasn't over the line. Like, he wasn't even close. McVay looked shook. Like, he was doing everything. He, he was just throwing shit, throwing shit at the wall and hoping that it would stick yeah. at that point. Yeah. So, for me, it's just like, I don't know. But, I mean, again, 
you know, Cooper Cup was the X factor. And you know who else? Who else had a good game for the Rams? Kendall Blanton. Yes, he did. We, we could talk he about did. it. Yo, bro, five catches, 57 yards. The man balled out. He had a couple catches that were like 20 yards for first downs. He, he, he yo, he came to play. Bro. Joe Blanton. Yo, he stepped he, up when Higby went down. No cap. He really did. He really did, and he's shown some athleticism and another guy who can catch passes in this offense. Um, guys, the most impressive aspect, I mean, the turning point for me was definitely the dropped interception. Um, I, otherwise, I would have said, like, I mean, it, it looked like, I'll tell you this right now, the entire game, to me, it felt like a 49ers game, actually. It really did. Like, it was the 49ers game Control. to lose. 100%. So, Mike. for me... The most impressive aspect is that the Rams actually fucking won because the 49ers had this thing in the bag. They kind of just they lost it. They they let they lost the lead. Uh, they let go of this one, really. I mean, if you were to tell me that the Rams were only going to run uh, as a unit 2.4 yards per carry and that they were going to have to throw the football and be one dimensional the whole game, I would have told you they'd lose. Hey, Mikey. I, I, I mean, it's crazy. Um, real fast. We need to give some blame to Kyle Shanahan. You, your offense only has 50 yards rushing. I mean, that was surprising that's number too, one. By the yeah. way. And number two, the dude cannot play with a lead for shit. I, I don't get it. Why can't this man finish the job? I don't understand. It's like he almost gets like, I, he gets like stupid in, in, in the fourth quarter. I, so, what, what, like, what are you doing? I, bro, I, I don't know. But the last three times that he was up and had a big lead in the fourth quarter, He's lost that in, in the fourth quarter, 53 to zero in, in the three games. 53 to nothing. That's a great stat. Is that? That's a great stat. That's dude. insane. That is crazy. What is that? In three games, you gave up 53 points and your offense didn't score one point. That's that's insane. He lost a Super Bowl. I, I, I he lost two Super Bowls. Yeah. Because of that. Oh, I'll give you something. I'll give you something that contributed to their demise. It's. It's the quarterback, and we're going to talk about him more, oh, obviously, in a few minutes. God. But 2 of 10 for 33 yards and a pick when pressured in this game. So that's part of it, too, obviously. And then the, the ugly interception at the end. Let's just, call, let's just call what it is. But that that's surely not the only thing here. That's not the only reason why this team blew the game. Um, you know, it's just unbelievable to me that the Rams won this, though. It really did feel like the 49ers are going to win, and we were going to be running away with some crazy narratives in, in, a, in a couple weeks. Um, so, guys, next up, I actually have I have a facts or cap question for you. And we're going to break down. We're going to break down what this team has to do to get back and whatnot. OK, the 49ers will return to the NFC championship game again next season. Facts or cap. That's cap. The NFC is loaded. Unless they figure out the quarterback position, like if they're gonna roll with Jimmy G, they have a chance. But because like he's done it twice, so for me, well, like, you gotta give him credit. Like he could do it again. Yeah, I, I was... mean, like he he, like they play the style that he could play. He can game manage, and he, and because they're a, typically a running team that does gadget plays, and he can he could he could throw the ball on short immediate routes, like slant routes, like that's what he does best. Like he's not he's not a deep thrower he's not a gunslinger none of that but for me like if they get like a brady or a rogers like yeah i mean i definitely would take them but for me like if if they don't get that kind of caliber quarterback i i think the nfc is too loaded i think the nfc is loaded yeah no i'm with you uh that that's well, here oh, one, sec, one sec one sec go ahead because this is my fault i should have said excluding the quarterback equation because this is like a three-part question coming up okay because okay. we're going to be talking about jimmy g so that's my bid okay try to exclude him from the answer i know that's hard i oh, know that's well, difficult it, uh, well then cap i mean like i said the nfc is, is just too loaded yeah i'm saying cap also um the rams are only going to get better and that's in their division. The cardinals i mean here's the thing the cardinals are going to have a drop off but i'm only saying that because they had such a great regular season last year. I don't think they could replicate that again. But if the Seahawks still have Russell Wilson, they're going to be there. Oh, like so that's great about it. They had a good. They had a good regular season. But you know, Russell Wilson, if they're with the Seahawks, they're not going nowhere. If Brady comes back to the Bucks, I mean, I just that's that's cap all the way around. 
Yeah, there's there's a lot of variables in play here as far as the teams that are going to be the cream of the crop in the NFC. So we have to kind of wait and see how the quarterback situations unwind. For me, it's cap because what I do know is this, is that even if the 49ers did get rid of Jimmy G and they have and they have Trey Lance, one way or the other, even if they have either of them, okay? So this is, I know I just said excluding them, so I'm including both of them. I'm saying cap because either way for me, it's not going to be enough with either of them at the helm. And now that leads to the next part, okay? The next facts or cap question. Jimmy G can be the QB of a Super Bowl winning team, facts or cap? This That's is facts. Fact. Yeah, yeah. He was a throw really? away from beating Patrick Mahomes. Agreed. One throw. Yeah. One throw. The dude can play. He just yeah. gets he gets wild disrespected. Yeah. I mean, not for nothing. This is facts. The last three years, he's been more successful than Aaron Rodgers in the playoffs. That's facts. It is. It is. Yeah, he made a Super Bowl. <laughs> he made a Super Bowl. That he's is been facts. to two NFC championship games. Yeah. Well, I mean, what 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 else do you need? Yeah. And here's the thing. If they move off of him, which I think is a big mistake. And we're going to talk about that next. My bad, Mikey. I just saw mm-hmm. that. It's okay. It's okay. Trey Lance All needs right. to make one Super Bowl and two NFC Championship games in three years or they made the wrong decision. Oh, I agree. Yo, also G- facts. Yo, Jimmy G, I think they should keep him. Absolute so facts. He's been a total pro. Did you see what Trey Lance said? They said they became best friends. They'll be friends for life. He's been a total leader. He's helped them. Yeah. He's, uh, he's helped them study. He showed them things in games and tried to help them understand. Debo Samuel even came out and said, I don't understand the hate for my quarterback. They love him. I don't understand it. They fuck with their quarterback. And here's also a tribute to the 44-year-old. Might have choked in the last game. I don't know, though. Different argument. That's how we're going to go here? (laughs) I love you. I love you. Jimmy G learned that from Tom Brady. Learned what? How to lead. He's a leader, bro. Carson Wentz melted the fuck down when they drafted Jalen Hurts. Yeah. Jimmy G, they traded their first-round picks and drafted Trey Lance second overall, and the dude got injured, he hurt his hand, and went to the NFC Championship game. Yeah, no, I, I respect Jimmy G. I think he, he showed me a lot this year, and I think he should definitely be their quarterback. And if they and, and you're right. Like, if they move off of him, like, I think that's a big mistake. I think it's a big mistake. And, I I, so and here's the great thing. If you're, if you're Pittsburgh, why wouldn't you take him with that roster? Jimmy G would be fine in Pittsburgh. Yeah. I really believe that. Mike yeah. Tomlin, Najee Harris, Deontay Johnson – I really believe he would be all right in Pittsburgh. No, he's not a bad quarterback. He's just not. He's not. He's not a stat guy. He's not a stud. He's not going to put up forty touchdowns in a year. He's not going to put up That's five thousand passes. He's going to win you games though. Oh, win games. Yeah, like he's he's methodical in his approach. Like he he doesn't well, go for the big plays. He goes for you know marching down the field, running the football, play action, short immediate throws. That's how he's been successful, and he, it's worked out for their offense. So guys. Um, the next question, and I'll, I'll give you my answer after this part, actually, because the next question was going to be Jimmy G. Uh, it's a facts or cap question. Jimmy G deserves to be the 49ers starting QB next season. Facts or cap. From what I'm hearing, you're both saying facts. Yes, right? you're facts. correct. All right. So that was the next part of it. Um, and if you have nothing else to add, I'll, I'll go right ahead. No, that's really it for me. All right. I'm screaming cap for both guys, and it's not it's it's unfortunate because you know what he's gonna get a bad rap from the way that the game ended. But for me, it's like I keep watching this guy. The one thing that stands out though, like I I appreciate his leadership and the teammates love him. Like you can't you can't dismiss that aspect of his game. Okay, he's cool under pressure. Um, well, not in this game actually. The two for ten for thirty three and a pick. Doesn't seem like he's cool under pressure, but at least he seems that way in the huddle. He seems cool under pressure. Um, he's a leader of this team, so I'm not trying to discount that part of him. And he's not a bad quarterback. He's he's more like uh, maybe like back end of the middle tier for me. I just don't think that he's – I'm screaming cap for both because I just don't think that he can do enough to elevate a team. Like, like they got here in spite of him. He had opportunities in this game to put it away himself as well, and he couldn't get it done. And that's the thing for him. And the, the other thing is, is he quite simply, I, I can't see this guy. He can't complete passes outside the numbers. This guy's all middle of the field. Like, that's that's how you shut down this offense. If you shut down the middle of this field, you're going to beat this guy. Now, the thing is, though, the thing that opens up this offense for them is their run game. And, I mean, I, I just think that, 
I think that they can be a much more explosive team with a different quarterback. That's not to say that Trey Lance is the answer. It just means to me it's just like Jimmy G can get you there, but I think someone else can take you the distance. Jimmy G's just not – he just doesn't do it for me. Yeah, he I feel doesn't. you. And I feel like that's with a lot of players. But, I mean, not for nothing, but I feel like the media gets so harsh with mid-tier quarterbacks. And then with superstars, they just get pass after pass. Like, not for nothing, but I can tell you right now, Aaron Rodgers can't make simple plays unless they're to Devontae Adams. He can't complete passes to Alan Lazard, Mark uh, MVS, Tunyon. He can't do that shit. He had guys wide open in the middle of the field, and he just keeps force-feeding Devontae Adams. Like I said, like, you got people, oh, Aaron Rodgers, greatest thrower of the football ever, top five ever. You can make a case he's the best quarterback ever. He's one in four in NFC Championship games. Like, it's just, it's unacceptable. And you don't, like, he's not sitting, I mean, he got crushed this year, but that was more because of the comments non-football related. But like like I said, the last three years, Jimmy Garoppolo has done better than than Aaron Rodgers, bro. He has. He has a Super Bowl right now screams to the point, it's a team game. And this team, Jimmy G was part of a great team. He wasn't the aspect that carried them this far, but he was part of it. Bro, they were 10 well enough. They were thir- he played were, well enough. The Packers were 13-4, and four, the yeah. best wide receiver in football, a top 10 running, maybe two top 10 running backs towards the end of the season. Yeah. And, and um, no, Mike, their defense gave up 13 points, bro. Well, look, so, we're not, like, I'm it's not, a team game. Listen, they had a great team, Green Bay. He choked. I'm, f- Mahomes, I'm just saying, he I'm choked. focusing on the question here. The I got Packers you. didn't do enough to do this. I got you. No. Plain and simple. He's, and and by the way, who can fucking complete passes to Alan Lazard and MVS? I'm just saying. Tom Brady. I'm not going to sit here and defend Aaron Rodgers because he was poopy in that game. I'm not going to defend Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> he, he deserves poopy. all of your criticism. But I'm just saying, who the fuck is going to complete passes to those guys? Tom Brady. Look at the 49ers <laughs> weapons and tell me it wouldn't look better over there with Aaron Rodgers. I'm just saying, well, I mean, quarterback come- to me is the most important position in this game. And you're just... They're, they're few and far between when you see examples of guys that take them to the distance, like the Trent Dilfers, okay? I it feel takes you. like an exceptional something on your team to be able to get it done in spite of a lacking quarterback. You don't he think can Jimmy G has there. the it factor? Right? Say it again? You don't think that like Jimmy G has that it factor? It's not even it factor. I just don't think he's good enough. Like, actually, you could argue he might have the. The it because he's a great leader and he does manage to get the most out of his team. That's a fair point. I like despite that. Despite playing like poopy, like yeah, he that, just, I got that. I'm with just, you. He can't complete passes outside of the, outside of the numbers, and that is such a crucial aspect in this league, especially when you look at the weapons that they have. Like attacking the middle field is great. You take, I mean, it, it's a way to win in this league, but you have to be able to adjust, and this is the way to shut them down. I mean, it was plain and simple. The team, the team kind of just stalls. It's like this team could be one of the most explosive offenses in the league with the guys that they have, and they can't be because they're quarterbacks holding them back. So if nothing else, it's like I know what Jimmy G can get me, and it's good enough, but why not take a chance on the unknown and Trey Lance? Or if somebody big becomes available, I wouldn't rule that out either. I'm just saying, like – you know, even what, what what could have what could Trey Lance like besides the maybe the leadership aspect like what couldn't he have done to improve that offense? Isn't it? He's amazing? got a bigger arm. He can run. He opens up a whole other dimension of the offense right there alone. Like who's to say he couldn't have done better? He might not have been a better leader as a rookie, mm-hmm. but I'm just saying like we know what Jimmy G is going to give us, and it's going to be solid game managing play. And there is a place for him in this league. He is a valuable player in this league, but he's not going to get me that ring. Isn't it amazing that one throw could really change somebody's opinion? Hell yeah. It, it's not Think for me, that. honestly. Because if he makes it's that not. throw and beats Patrick Mahomes, we're having a different conversation here. Because if he wins that ring and loses the NFC Championship game, there is no questions about Jimmy G's f- uh, future. He's staying with the Niners. They would keep him. Well, 100%. you're right about the future if he makes part, one Nick. throw, one throw. He changes his whole trajectory of his career. If that dude makes that interception That's insane. and they make the Super Bowl, are they keeping Jimmy well, G? Absolutely they're keeping Jimmy G if you go back to the you're, Super Bowl. Absolutely. And you're not wrong, Nick. 
you're not wrong. His future, correct. When you word it that way, it would have changed the whole future because they have a ring and they obviously can't move on from this guy. But that doesn't change the fact that he just simply, he cannot deliver upper tier quarterback play in this league. What if he was and hurt? And I think at some point, it's the NFL is a what have you done for me lately league. What if what he was injured? What have you done for me lately? What if he made it? He would be the quarterback of this team. They wouldn't have drafted somebody, but that doesn't mean that two years later they wouldn't be questioning whether or not he could still play. I think he could play. I think at least he would have earned himself the opportunity to be this quarterback of this franchise for, for another year or two. They might have, you know, I mean, they might have guaranteed the later part of his deal. You never know. But now at this point, it just seems like this the writing's on the wall. It almost sounds like he knows it too. If he had won this, it would have changed the conversation as far as what the 49ers have to do. They would have had a little bit of pressure on them, but at this point, I think that he just gave them the out right there. And that was a bad that was a bad play at the end of the game. Live to fight another down and throw that shit away. That was not a good play to end the game. And it's unfortunate that he's going to be – it's going to all come down to that one play right there. But the rest of the game wasn't that great either. Let's just be honest. Yeah, but can you can you think it's about coaching too as well? Because not for nothing, if you look at Kyle Shanahan's uh, um, history, he's choked in a, in, a, in a lot of in a lot of big games. So is it you his fault or is everybody. it Jimmy G? Like I for they me, didn't win like, the game. like for me, like Jimmy G, bro, he's a baller. Like yo, he like he he's not flashy, bro. Like but like he fits their offense. Like for me, like to take a team to a Super Bowl and literally losing by one throw. I mean, honestly, that's, that's really that, that was the game. That's that. That's fucking tough. He was wide open too, by the way. Emmanuel like, Sanders, man, wide the fuck open. That would change his whole career. But if he makes that throw, like it's like for them, it's he's he would be a household name in the, in the league. It's facts. Won a Super Bowl, and then he got hurt the next year, and then he came back and took the t you know that same team to the NFC Championship game. Like that's that's pretty good accolades. If he just makes one throw. Hell yeah. So for me, it's oh, you like, know what would have changed? It, but my thing is this, though. I'm not going to kill a guy for making, for missing one throw. Like, if he's going to get me there and get me that close, I still have a chance to win with him. I don't, I, it's not like I, I'm, I'm not going to win. Like, why, why not? I'll give you a good comp here. And by the way, he misses a lot of throws. That's the Yeah, I mean, come point. on. Like, like, but like, go. He's not perfect. Like, but, but I'll give you I a good comp. I know Kyler Murray misses here's, a lot of throws, too. He ain't get to uh, change the game. Here's what the trajectory would have been for this guy, okay? Best case scenario. He wins that Super Bowl, and I could see his career unfolding like Joe Flacco's, except he was worse than Joe Flacco. Joe Flacco was a better quarterback than Jimmy Garoppolo. But as you saw, like Joe Flacco had his limitations too uh, as his career went on. I think that's what would have happened here because Jimmy G already was paid. Maybe you guarantee the later part of his deal, but the trajectory would have been the same for me. It's a, it's a good franchise with, um, you know, they have good units on both sides of the ball. They've had good coaching, although you can argue, obviously, that there's been some moments where Kyle Shanahan comes up short. But this team, I mean, they had this game. They let it slip as a team. I mean, the Rams still the Rams still did what they had to do at the end. And Jimmy G, just he's just not doing it for me. It actually almost felt like I was watching Carson Wentz week 18 in, in the fourth quarter there. That's what it looked like to me. Oh, don't disrespect him nah. like that. Nah, we ain't doing that, bro. It no did. way. <laughs> it did. No way. It was a collapse. Jimmy Wentz. No way. I'm not the only one saying that, by the way. That's all over the place. But but anyway. Again, so here, they're going to so criticize here. Jimmy G, right? But they don't criticize Patrick Mahomes for choking. But Jimmy G, literally, Jimmy G is the reason why this team can't this team is not going to get to where they need to be because of this guy. Patrick Mahomes carries this team, generally speaking. Patrick Mahomes did not do enough in that half. That is that is honestly the truth, and he did choke. It's the truth. But Tom Brady also choked in the first half of the Rams game. We're going to give these guys yeah, their shit, see? but at least we know they, they have proven themselves in this league. They don't need to answer anybody. They have rings. Jimmy G does not. Yeah, he does. These are facts. Yeah, he does. He won one with with uh, New England. <laughs> what? You're wild, bro. Why? How many rings does Carson Wentz have? None. None. Well, yeah. one. That's your answer. That's your answer. One. Because last time I I I. Are we like really I've gonna take it this direction, bro? Hell yeah. 
He won a ring. Dude, who gives a fuck about Carson Wentz and Jimmy G yeah. having a ring on the I'm bench? I'm just saying, if you're gonna car, if you're gonna count Carson I'm Wentz's ring, sense. you gotta count Jimmy G's ring. What? It's the same fucking thing. It's Wait. the same scenario. What? Yeah, has nothing to you do with You disagree with me? You disagree? Bro, they were the backups. Makes sense. So what? He has a ring. Carson Wentz actually was part of that Eagles oh, winning. Come that. on. You don't think a backup That's quarterback has anything to do with anything? Of what we were not just when saying. it's Tom Brady. True, but they, like he still plays a scout team. Yeah, he, you know what he does? <laughs> he deflate. He deflates the footballs. Yeah, you're right. That's cold. No, that's yeah, fucking that's really shot. Cold. You're, you're shot. I love I'm, you. I'm, but, you know, but you know, it's funny. Like, yo, that shit don't even get to me, bro, because he loves he loves Tom Brady behind closed doors. I so, do. Like, I don't I even do. care. It doesn't even bother me. It don't, like, bro. He's the best ever. Yeah, dude. you focus, bro. Like, yo, he is the best ever. You got good energy. So for me, I don't give a fuck what anybody <laughs> says, bro. You guys can say he choked all you want, but my man Mahomes fucking choked on a d on the, that game. <laughs> I both choked. Guess what? Oh my no God. They are both Super Bowl champions who. No in big moments, cat. they what? are both Super Bowl champs oh. who choked in their respective games. It's okay to say it. It's fine, man. But that doesn't that doesn't discredit the fact that they fucking show that they can elevate a team and win a Super Bowl. Jimmy G can't do it. Uh -huh. He can't. Look at the team they have. Look at what they have. They could be. They, they literally have everything. They could be one of the most explosive offenses in the league. It's crazy. They drafted Trey Lance for a reason. That doesn't mean that he's going to be the guy, but they drafted him and traded up for him for a reason. Don't regret and it. It just happened. Anyway, <laughs> guys, last part of the show. Okay, last part of the show because we carried on there a little bit, but that was fun. That's fun. All right. The Good burning question, though, is what else do the 49ers need to do in the offseason? And let me give you their situation real quick. Okay. $11 million in cash space. Free agents. They got... Lakin Thomason, he starts on the offensive line. They got Arden Key, unsung guy on the defensive line. You got Travis Benjamin. He's a, a weapon in the return game. Occasionally, they bring him in as a threat down the field. You got Jaquaski Tart um, on the back end of that defense. And we just talked about him. We got Kawan Williams, also cornerback. Got to bring him back. You have Raheem Mostert, Jason Barrett. All right? This is the situation they're facing. They have... 11 million cap, a lot of free agents right there, but the but here is if they do move on from Jimmy G, they free up 25 million in cap. That's just one move. So what else, what do they need to do here? What do they got to do to, to get back in this contender conversation? For me, I would really focus on um, Lakin Tom, Tomlinson, yeah. the left tackle. He was ranked eighth. I mean, he gave up, he had this year through week nine, right? He had no sacks allowed and just two quarterback hits through nine Great weeks. Great stats, Mike. Mm -hmm. Great stats. So I feel like, and with him and Trent Williams, I feel like you have to, whether it's Garoppolo or Lance, protect, their, you protect them. That's what it is. That's how that offense rolls. Like I said, it, it's unfortunate that they were such a dominant running team and only put up 50 yards running in the NFC chip. But that's where my main focus will go. And then second, secondly, I would try to bring in a cornerback. I think they need to get a little bit. They need to upgrade a cornerback. They could use another one. I'll agree with you there. I think they have to absolutely, though, re-sign Kawan Williams because he's, um, he's been a stud for them this season. But they do need another guy to go along with them. And they were hoping that Jason Verrett would be the guy. Yes. And he was playing well, but he always gets hurt. Yeah. This guy is always hurt, so you can't count on him. It's unfortunate because he's got a ton of talent. But, yeah, I agree with you, Mike. Cornerback, for sure. Uh, Nick, go right ahead. Yeah, I'm I'm at the same points as Paul's. I mean, you got you got to keep your offensive line. I mean, if you don't keep your offensive line, you're going your your quarterback's never going to have a chance. And you need he needs to have the, you know the time to get his playmakers the ball, especially when you got Debo Samuel, you got Brandon Ayuk. And I honestly, I fuck with Jawan Jennings. I do. I don't think they use yeah, him he's enough. Good. I don't I really don't think like the Niners, they have all the ingredients. They have a great tight end in George Kittle. They got two good wide receivers in Ayuk and Samuel. Uh, they have a good running back in, in uh, Elijah Mitchell. Um, for me, it's just like, yo, if you can get your slot guy involved to move the chains, like, you'll be unstoppable. I think Ayuk is going to have, I don't want to say a big year, but I think Ayuk is going to have a really good year next year. Yeah. I think he really came onto the scene midway through this season and started producing and got some confidence. He looked really sharp. It was so weird. Like, in the beginning of the year, 
they were telling like all like from like the reports I was hearing, and then you know Shanahan speaking about Ayuk saying he wasn't even ready to to step on the field. He wasn't. Yeah. He's he he regressed, or he he's not better than the guy that's next on the roster. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, how this him guy balled out last year? What happened? Him and Trey Sermon were the were the weirdest things happening with that team in the beginning of the season. Yeah, because Trey Sermon, a lot of people were drafting him in fantasy, waiting for him to take the reins. Yeah. And then yeah, he was a healthy major. scratch. Well, when Mostert went down. Yeah, and then he was a healthy scratch, and Elijah Mitchell came, who's a very good running back. Yeah. And they got back uh, Jeff Wilson, who was normally their goal line guy. And then Trey Sermon just became basically non-existent. But didn't they take him in, like, the second round? That's a third-round pick right there. Okay, a third-round pick. Yeah, like, that. Yeah. that's just strange shit. Yeah, I don't know. That's I mean, it turns out they were, right. they were right on Elijah Mitchell. We were all questioning, you know, when's Trey Sermon going to get his chance? But Elijah Mitchell really stepped up. And show he could be the guy, but he also needs some help because he gets hurt as well. He's not meant to be a 25 touch per game guy, uh, but he can be the one A or one B in a backfield. So now I would go out. I would get another running back, similarly to what we just said about the Chiefs' run game. Go out and get yourself a bruiser, um, and you have to lock up Lake and Thomas, and that is the most obvious move. Uh, but for me, though, if you if you do get rid of Jimmy G, which I think at this point is inevitable um just due to the situation i mean they clear out 25 million in cap they move on to trey lance and they could put that money elsewhere and become elite even in some other positions um nick i love the Jawan jennings point i think this guy is a stud he's uh, like physically he's like six two and he runs what a four four this guy is really he's, dynamic yeah. oh absolutely and a, the right quarterback and i'm not even saying trey lance may be the guy i think that he can play a lick but we'll see but like the right quarterback can get that guy the ball yes that guy should ascend in this offense and they should be i mean this is what i'm saying they have everything in place to be a dominant team in this league on right. both sides of the ball they have a dominant roster you could argue that outside of quarterback they have the best roster in the nfl they're right up there in that conversation you know the whole i think the their roster. their offense is missing I, I, not that I think that they need another wide receiver. I think they need a veteran wide receiver because Debo, Samuel, Ayuk, they're still young players. If you can get somebody, you know, a veteran wide receiver to come in and coach them and, you know, have them, you know, like like really take off in their career because, you know, due to some advice that they have, you know, from, from their past experiences, you know, coaching these young players up, I think that would benefit the young wide receivers on the Niners, and I think that would elevate their game even more. What about A.J. Green? Yeah, why not? Yo, you know who would be a good fit? Veteran Bring back Emmanuel Sanders. Bring that back also, Emmanuel yeah, Sanders. Mikey, yeah, that's a good one. I like that too. But either, I, I don't think you could go wrong with either of those guys. Both have played on the big stage. Both have performed on the big stage. I'm not yeah. even talking about them playing. It's I'm just pressing. about them like coaching like and these the, young players up because like if you can room. get if you can get Sanders and he can coach up Jawan Jennings, like he can elevate his game. This offense will be will be scary. You have three I think lethal wide receivers. He, could play. And, and he just George don't Kittle. get the targets. George That's Kittle all. was hurt this year too. That's why he was so quiet. But he he's a baller. Oh yeah, yeah. But he had well, a quiet. And, he was quiet. Yeah. And George Kittle had to be brought in to block more, mm -hmm. uh, not only in the run game but for Jimmy G. So. Um, that's that's just part of the game. He's one of the elite blockers in the game too. So, uh, he did what was best for his team. This was like fresh off of him having that streak of like five straight weeks of just straight dominance when he came back from injury, um, and they they. They had to use him differently. That's what it looked like. But this is why, you know, a guy like Jawan Jennings, had he been given more targets by the quarterback, um, he He's could still have stepped that into that role that George Kittle left available. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with that. But anyway, guys, I think that's a good point to close off. Um, unfortunately, tech issues kind of threw, threw things off a little bit, but we got right back on track. Uh, this is a great episode. It was a lot of fun. And thank you so much for the comments, as usual. Thank you for tuning in. Um, you have any last thoughts, guys, before I wrap this up? Yeah, I got to be honest, man. I'm, uh, I miss the comments. <laughs> yeah, that second part. I miss it. Uh, like, I just miss, show, I know. I miss the energy from, from everybody. So, you know it's uh, fucking yeah, horse we'll shit because our internet is, like, perfectly fine now. That's yeah. so regular. That is regular. That's some horse shit. Put the hex on. Hey, it That's all right. We'll be live you know on what? Thursday at 8 p.m. with more energy. Mm. Yep. Yeah, but we're gonna have we're gonna have some different topics. 
Um, Super Bowl, we got, you know, we got to wait two weeks, unfortunately, but we'll still have plenty of hot football topics. Stay tuned for that. Okay, guys. But tonight, this episode of P&I was brought to you by Prize Picks, your home for daily fantasy sports. New users who sign up for Prize Picks today using the promo code ICONIC will receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100. Promo code ICONIC, Prize Picks, daily fantasy made easy. Also, I hope that you check this out on PropsHQ.com, the Props Network. Be sure to subscribe to us there to keep up with our show news and our episode schedules. Lastly, you just heard it here. We will be back again this Thursday, 8 o'clock p.m. We will be live. We'll have our shit fixed up. Um, it was out of our control, but we still delivered you the content because that's what we do here. And we don't crumble under pressure like Jimmy G. <laughs> Unreal. So, this dude. Gonna, that's all. I'm going to pass it off to Nick Fierce right there. <laughs> just take, my it. Subtle dig just take it away, Nick, please. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for hanging out with us. We appreciate all the love, support, and the comments from earlier. Sorry that we had technical difficulties. We will be back Thursday, 8 p.m. on live. If you haven't done so already, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell on YouTube. We are also we are also available on PropsHQ.com, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, iHeart, Megaphone, Stitcher, and all that other shit. Just <laughs> like, subscribe, rate us five stars, do whatever you got to do, get our name out. Uh, we appreciate it. Um, also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, and we will see you guys Thursday night at 8 p.m. at PNI.